Everybody, my name is Tim. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a sort of exciting short video. Uh, so this is about a technique that I recently discovered that I've never seen anybody talk about yet. And like when I discovered that this was working, like my mind was blown, to be honest. Uh, it's not as blown right now, now that I somewhat discovered how it, how it works, but it's still, it's very powerful. Uh, so I'm going to discuss how to somewhat retime geometry that has changing point counts. Uh, which, if you've ever tried to do that, it's like it's not possible. You can, uh, like, you, there's a whole host of tricks to do that. And generally, when you try to do that in Houdini, like you need to put like retime notes all throughout your network uh, to try to retime something. It's it's quite tricky. Uh, and now I'm gonna like I'm gonna blow your mind by just showing a demo of of this, which kind of blew my mind when I when I did it. All right. So I have a couple of examples here. Um, here is a just a, a morphing box. Uh, nothing too interesting. What is this? It's morphing. And this is just doing some VDB advection and then converting it to to uh, uh, to polygons. You can see here's polygons. If you regular, if you put a time blend here and you put like 0 0.01 speed or something, you're gonna try to redo this. You're gonna get stuff like this where the point counts is changing and it doesn't know what to do. So it just completely weirds out. So we're retiming it to uh, one tenth the speed. Now here's my time, my thing. Let's do also one tenth the speed. And you can see it's uh, it's pretty much stable. Like I mean, it's still retiming. So, but you can see, and this just, just works on the points here. Uh, another example. Um, animating a couple of curves, uh, and then I'm just throwing a resample after it, so the point count changes. Just to because right now, of course, the point count is is stationary, uh, but you can see the point count here is gonna change every frame. And if you do this regularly with a regular read time, you're gonna get something like this, where it has no idea what it needs to do. Uh, and then here's my read time, perfectly smooth. And then one more example, which is going to be a little, a little bit slower, but here's a, just a shelf tool of the uh, flip configure flip. So it's a flip simulation being meshed and then sort of falling down. And here's my lob read time. And all right, I should probably retime it by a little bit less so you can actually see what's going on. But you can see uh, pretty much stable interpolating all of the attributes. So yeah, if you like, if you're seeing this, you're probably like, huh? like, how does that work? Um, that's what I thought. Um, and like, I even asked the developers of side effects, like, how does, how does this work? Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's not 100% doing it, but like, so let me, let me show you some, some caveats here. So let's say with this flip simulation, let's say I cash this out. So just reduce, let's remove the compress, maybe let's do file cache. So if I cache this out and then plug it in here, um, flip, let's just save out a couple of frames. Right. This is enough. Uh, so if I do it now, You see, it's no longer working. Uh, so now it's using integer frames. So it's not it's not perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, let, let's go. Actually, so like there are, there are some caveats here, uh, but for the most part, like you can still see how this is very useful uh, if you want to do read times instead of needing to chain read times all throughout your uh, your network. You could just put them somewhere at the end, and then it will work. Uh, like for example, I can even if I if I merge all of this in and just merge everything in here and let's remove the retime. If I just put one retime at the end here, uh, it should still work. You see, it can just retime everything at once. So uh, you can see this is, it's still very powerful. All right, now let's go into how it's made. It's actually super easy. All right, so let's actually dive into this HDA. 
And actually what's in here is there's just, there's a lob import, um, a lob network, and I unpack USD. So it actually, what this is doing, and we can, uh, we can build this ourselves just in here if you want. So it's actually using the, uh, uh, the Solaris read time. And what I think the Solaris read time is probably doing is just evaluating the entire, um, sub graph at once. And that's why it's working. Uh, all right. So let's, let's go in here. So here we have this thing. Now we make a lob network and let's copy. Let's give this a name. Let's call it out. And in the lob network, we're going to do a sub import. I'm going to import our thing that we did. All right, you can see it will just morph. Now we're going to do a retime in here, or just a time shift, sorry. Just a time shift, turn off integer frames, and we can just retime it in here. So let's uh, let's just make something um, on top here, maybe some controls. Let's do this in a, let's do this in a sub network. So then we can put some controls on the sub network and we can just do something like this. So we're just gonna do float time, All right? Uh, invisible apply, All right? Dollar FF. Let's copy parameters and let's go in here. And let's uh, paste that in there. All right, so if we actually, if we go in here and if we just do divide by five here, and we need to first, we need to load this back in because like this, this is already gonna work. Like you can see, we're just using the uh, the lob read time here and you can see this, this just already works. And I think why this works, like I'm not completely sure, um, cause like the devs did answer, but it was it completely clear to me because they said, well, it's not, it's not interpolating uh, between frames, but what I think is happening is that instead, what the read time does, it just re it just evaluates the output here. It doesn't evaluate anything that comes before it. What I think the lob import is doing, or the uh, the uh, the lob read time, is it just evaluates the entire tree. Um, so by evaluating the entire tree, it knows that before we convert it to polygons there's a it's still a vdb and it can read time vdb so it's going to read time the vdb so that's what i think is happening uh but anyway we can do a no out here and just put out and then we can so we can make it a little bit easier also if we just want to reference uh, this thing in here so we can just say all right uh, all right call this in and we can do in this thing we can just say oh in oh in so we'll load it and then we do a lob imports lob path so we're gonna load the or it should, we should probably do uh, like this lob imports and then uh, uh what do we call it again we called it out Oh wait, uh, lob net out uh, render. We need to say, all right, we need to say, all right, you want to load every primitive. Where you go, all of the, here's all of the primitives. Uh, you can see this comes in packed, so we want to unpack this. We can unpack USD polygons, and we're back to our USD. Uh, transfer attributes, all of the attributes, uh, transfer the groups, etc., etc. So you can just put an output here, and then you essentially have what I made in my HDA here. But yeah, um, like pretty pretty simple stuff, but it's, it's very powerful. And just to add to that, like if you've never used the the lob uh, read time, it's it's really cool actually. Um, because just let's do another example. Let's say we have a uh, let's say we have a box spinning here. Let's say uh, let's say I just retime it or just animate it a little bit. Let's hide uh, the other thing that we did. Just re just animate it. All right, there we go. And so we also have a camera here that we want to do.
So let's also do a camera that's sort of gonna rotate a little bit. So let's see, uh, we rotate like that. All right, here we go. We're gonna have a camera that's gonna rotate and a box gonna rotate. Um, and if you're ever done retiming, you know how much of a hassle it can be if you just need to sort of retime stuff in here. Uh, just camera retiming is always just a hassle. Um, you're gonna need to put retimes in here everywhere. You need to link up your retimes. It's a pain in the ass. All right, let's just see what happens if we do scene import. Let's just scene import all in this case. Uh, so we're gonna just look through the camera. So we have, we have our thing here. Just being retimed. Let's do time time shift. So again, our time shift, and then integer frames. Let's do dollar ff divided by ten, and you can see we retime both at once. Uh, it's very cool, and it's honestly like even if you're not using Slavers for anything else, just using it for retimes is just it's very powerful. So that was everything. I know it was a very short video, but uh, yeah, this is just this is super powerful stuff. If you want to download the HDA that I've in, that I've made in this in this video, like I know it's you can just build it yourself. But if you just want to download mine, it's going to be on Patreon, uh, so you can download it there and you help support the channel. So if you want to help support the channel, uh, go over on Patreon. Um, leave this thumbs up if you liked it. Leave this thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. We hit twenty thousand subscribers uh, this week, by the way. So super thanks for everybody who subscribed. Uh, big big milestone. Like I know twenty thousand doesn't sound like a lot, but like a lot. But remember, this is very niche. Like CG is very niche still. Um, so I think like for for Houdini focused channel, twenty thousand is pretty good. So super thanks to everybody, and um, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.